Hi everyone, let's talk about four of loops in the context of arrays. First off, what are four of loops? Uh, a four of loop is a new addition to JavaScript and it allows us to iterate over anything that is an iterable, meaning anything that is like an array. An iterable is anything that can be iterated over or we can loop through it, then that is called an iterable. Uh, in simple terms, iterables are something that are countable. Like arrays, you can count their items. That's why arrays are called iterable because they are countable. Let's jump into an example to see how they actually work. I'm going to create an array of vegetables and here is the array. I'm going to copy all of the vegetables and I'm going to paste them right here. So we have potato, tomato, garlic, and onion. Now, normally what the way that we would iterate over this array would be using a for loop, a simple regular for loop. We would do like for uh, let i is equal to zero and then we would say, okay, i goes. Uh, the iterations will stop as soon as we hit the length of this vegetables array. That's why I'm going to say um, vegetables dot length. And then after each iteration, we are going to increase the number of i. So it goes to the next item. So the first item is item one or index zero. And then if, if we wanted to grab the next item, we need to increment it. And then we could say console.log. Uh, we could grab, uh, take a look at the i. This is going to give us the indices. We can also take a look at the actual vegetables. So this is going to be vegetables. And let's pass an i right here. And we can see we have potato, tomato, garlic, and onion. Now, this is the old way of doing uh, looping through arrays. There is actually a newer syntax, a newer way of doing it, and that is for off loop. And they're very, very simple, a lot simpler than a lot of these unnecessary variables that we have to specify, we have to give it the length, and all of this uh, cumbersome stuff. Now, the syntax for anything you want to learn, you first you need to understand the syntax. So the syntax, syntax for a for of loop is like this. So we have for. We have const, const iterator of an object. In this case, our object is what? Our object is vegetables. And the iterator could be anything. You could pass in a singular vegetable, or you can just say like an entry, anything uh, that is going to you. This is basically um, very arbitrary. It is a the loop agent. So it is, this iterator is kind of the I of this loop. You can leave it as iterator. I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to specify it as vegetable because it makes more sense. So I'm going to say for const vegetable of vegetables. So the first one is singular because this is going to grab one value at a time. And then I'm just going to say console.log vegetable. That's it. And now we can see everything on the screen. So you can see how simple how much simpler this actually is. We didn't need to create any kind of variable, didn't need the length, didn't need to increment it, and we certainly didn't need this kind of syntax. So it makes it a lot easier. But where are the indices? We can find out the indices as well. There is actually a for um, in uh, loop as well that is basically geared to give us indices. We can take a look at that as well. I'm going to comment this one out. So if I say for n, for vegetable in vegetables, this is going to give us the indices. So technically, I just showed you how to work with two kinds of loops. For of loops, by default, they're going to give you the array items or the iterable items. But for in loops, they're going to give you by default indices. Now, if you use a for of loop, you can get the indices as well, but you have to do a little bit more work. And if you use the for in loop, you can get the items as well, but you need to do a little bit of work. I'm not going to talk about for and loops anymore. I'm just going to jump back into the for of loop. I'm going to, uh, first off, I would like to console log something. So there is a function available for us that we can use to give us uh, all the array items in, in the form of an object. And what is that function? That function is actually called entries. It is actually a method. So I can say 
vegetables and I'm going to say dot entries and if I take a look at this it says returns an iterable of key value pairs for every entry in the array what does that mean it means for every entry in this array we're going to return an object because objects have key value pairs so what are going to be the key and value the key is going to be the index for that specific item and the value is going to be the item itself let's save it and let's take a look at it so you can see that it is it basically returns an array iterator it doesn't show anything in here but what this means is that this is an iterator so we can iterate through it so when we can iterate through it why don't we use it in our for of loop so i'm going to comment this one out for you could say cons you could say let i typically uh, do let in for of loops uh, so I'm going to say vegetable and vegetables, remember, dot entries, dot entries. And now this is going to give us an array iterator, right? And we can iterate over that. Console.log. Let's take a look at the vegetable. And for entries, for, oh, sorry, this is end. This has to be for offload. There we go. So it gave us, uh, sorry, it didn't give us an object. It gives us technically arrays or objects, but it gives us arrays, right? Now, the first item is the index for that specific item. And the second item is the value for it. So this, this is what it meant by key value. Like this is the key and this is the value. And now we can iterate over this iterator, right? over the return value. Now, if you wanna get the indices, the only thing you need to do is basically grab the first item, zero, one, two, three. This is gonna give us the indices, and this is gonna give us the items. So we can use our template strings, console.log, and let's use backticks. I'm gonna grab the vegetables. I'm gonna grab the index. And I'm gonna, I could offset it by one if I want to. And you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do you one better. We have talked about um, uh, destructuring in our previous lectures. We did talk about array destructuring and we talked about function, uh, object destructuring and then array destructuring. So what I could do is instead of like elongating this, like making this more lengthy, this implementation, what I could do is, as we are iterating through these arrays, we could destructure them. So I'm gonna pass in another variable there that is gonna be i, and I'm gonna put it within the destructuring expression. So as we are iterating through this array, we are also destructuring every returned value or every returned key value pair. And now we can take a look at that. We can say console.log i and then the vegetable itself. So we got zero, we got one, we got two, and we got three. So this is like uh, iterating and destructuring at the same time. We can take it one step further using uh, the template literals syntax that we have. And I can just offset it by one so we don't start from zero, we, we start from one. Uh, let me grab this. Uh, so I, I'm going to offset it by one, and then I'm going to pass in the actual item, which is the vegetable. Let's save that. There we go. I'm going to comment that one out. So it's one potato, two tomato, then garlic, and then onion. Now, so far, everything is working okay. But what about working with a function? Uh, how can you use for of loops in a uh, for of loops in a function now i'm going to give you an example for that as well and then we're going to wrap this video up now let's say we have a function that is called addition the function's job is to add numbers so if we have five numbers in this function we are going to add the first number with the second and then the uh, result is going to be added to the third so it's it's in that kind of manner and in here i'm, I'm not going to do anything I'm going to come back to, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to call this function. Addition, uh, let's say I'm going to pass in 10, 20, and 30. 
Now we have all of this. We don't see anything on the console. Let's, uh, there is actually something called um, in JavaScript that is called uh, function of unknown parameters, parameter length. This is actually a function. This is not going to work in TypeScript, but it is um, actually it's going to work in, in JavaScript. In TypeScript, everything has to be known. But in JavaScript, this can work. You can have three arguments, but you, can but you can't have any kind of parameters. So this is called the function of unknown parameter length. Now, how would you deal with this? The reason that I'm actually throwing this issue out there is, let's say you have number A, number B, and number C. And then the user, what the user does is, the user enters four, five arguments, but the function, <coughs> excuse me, but the function actually accepts only three parameters. So let's just get rid of all these three parameters and let's see what we can do here. There is, a, a key, there is um, an object involved with every function that is called arguments. And that is actually a special, <coughs> excuse me, that is actually a special keyword in JavaScript. So we can take a look at that. And it is a form that is a little bit familiar to you arguments and I'm going to console log it and now you can see that if I expand this what is written here it means that it, this right here it means that this is this is an object but what is the form of this object now even though it is an argument object even though it says an object but if I take a look at the actual syntax we can see that it is square brackets therefore it signifies that it is somehow some kind of an array. Now, this is not technically an array, but this is something that we could make it into an array. And then when we make it into an array, then we can iterate over it. So it wouldn't matter how many uh, arguments the user passes in because we are iterating over it, over the array of arguments. We can grab all of them and we can just sum them up. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm also cons I'm going to console log the type of type of arguments, and you can see it, it is going to give us an object. But we can do a lot better than this. Now, since arguments is it looks like an array, we could work with it. But there is actually something else that I need to show you. So if you click on this, you can see we have uh, this is we have the indices. 0 to 4, and then we have all of the numbers. But if I click on the prototype, you can see these are all the functions that can be used on this specific array-like object. It can be used. So we can use the constructor, we can use the has own property, is prototype of, prototype of to string, value of, to locale string. We can use all of them. Keep that in mind. This is actually a good reference point for you. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm, first I'm going to show you the uh, usual uh, normal uh, for loop. So I'm going to say let i is equal to 0. We are going to start from 0. Then i is going to go less than arguments dot length. Since it looks like an array, it should have some kind of a length. And then we're going to increment the i. Let's um, console log arguments. And I'm going to grab the actual values in there as well. There we go. So it doesn't matter how many values the user passes in. Uh, that's why it's called unknown parameter length. So if the user passes in 120, 150, 250. So there are now eight values. We are, because we are iterating over that dynamically or programmatically, we are going to grab all the values. Now, when we grab all the values, what we can do is, what we want to do is, we want to sum all of them up. So 10 plus 20 plus 30 plus 40 plus 50, what we want to know the result. Now, for that, I'm going to create another variable that is going to be let result, and I'm going to instantiate it as 0 first. I'm going to assign it to 0 first. And then, in here, I'm going to say return result using the... Uh, um, addition, uh, the increment assignment operator, I'm going to add the arguments, all the values from the arguments array. And this is going to return, uh, OK, 
Okay, not return it. I'm just going to add it there. I'm not going to return it there from there. I'm going to console log, uh, remove the console log so we don't see anything on the on the console, right? And now I'm going to come down here. I'm going to say console.log. Let's take a look at the result. And it is 670. Now, it doesn't matter if the user adds, let's say, 20, 35, 650. It is just going to keep increasing. And it's going to add everything. And you can see already this syntax is a lot confusing. So what we could do instead of this is uh, we could use the for of loop. This is basically an example of for of loop. So for const, um, now this is an array of numbers. So I'm going to say for number in arguments, it has to make sense, right? Uh, first off, we can take a look at the numbers. Why am I saying in arguments? Maybe it's because of Python. Uh, for number of arguments, let's take a look at number, and it's going to give us all the numbers, correct? And then what we are going to do is we are basically going to do the same thing. Let me just copy this one and put it right here, result. We are going to add the result. Uh, let's pass a number right here. There we go. It says not a number. Um, Argument. Oh, we don't need this. This is the simple for loop syntax. We're just going to add a number, and it is 13, 1367. And it doesn't matter how many uh, arguments you have right here. So if someone asks you, okay, how are you going to capture an unknown amount of arguments for a function, this is one of the ways that you can do it. See you in the next video.